Hey, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, I'm Julia McCoy. And typically I explore the futuristic lane of AI, where it's going to take humanity, how we can find meaning in life again, UBI, AGI, super intelligence, and so much more. Today, I wanna to share with you a practical tutorial that you can apply right now on seven of what I believe are the best AI image tools and how you can use them to generate thumbnails, social media graphics, image concepts, or just play around to get familiar with generative AI, which is a really smart idea. If the tutorial I'm about to share with you is helpful, I'd love to know in the comments if you want more videos like these and you want more practical, real world applications of AI that you can apply right now. I've been working full time in AI since early 2023, and I've learned a lot about the correct usage of AI, what to do, what not to do, the tools to avoid and the tools to use. And I want to bring that knowledge to you. I think one of the most important things we could do in our journey to adapting to AI not dying is to start playing with these tools. And you hear that from so many AI experts because it's true. Just getting our hands on these tools, most of which I'm about to share with you are in fact free. The others are very low cost. It's a great way to get familiar with artificial intelligence and familiarity brings knowledge, which really dispels fear. You only fear what you don't know. So again, let me know in the comments if you like this format, this practical advice. I'm gonna share with you Midjourney Alpha, Dolly 3, by ChatGPT, Meta AI's Imagine Tool, Microsoft's free AI image generator, Canva's free AI image generator, the Adobe Firefly AI art generator, and lastly, one of my favorite AI image generators out there called My Mood AI. This is how I get all of those YouTube thumbnails on my channel that look a lot like me. Spoiler alert, it's all AI. All right, so without further ado, let's jump into the tutorial. Hey there, so you're here at my desk. My YouTube channel has thumbnails with my face on them, and the majority of these were created by AI. Uh, meaning my likeness, my face, that's not actually me. <laughs> so I'm gonna share with you in this tutorial how to actually do that yourself and which app I use to do that. But first I wanna share with you the leading AI image apps and how we use them in the different companies I work within to generate social content, whether it's an idea, an actual image for that idea, could be some brand and logo concepts. There's just infinite uses for this. So the first one is through ChatGPT called Dolly. And this is what it looks like. It's going to be here on the left-hand side after you sign up for ChatGPT. Now ChatGPT, I have the plus version, which is just 20 bucks a month. I highly recommend it. If you look at Dolly 3 and what OpenAI says about it on its blog, it's pretty cool. It's got some awesome capabilities and we're on the three model. So the detail level is a lot greater than what it used to be. And I look forward to seeing this continue to evolve. And that said, one of the limitations of Dolly, and I'll show you what it looks like to just generate an image with it. It's so simple. So we're gonna ask it to create an image in my neon purple colors. Tell it what your brand colors are for social media sharing that says adapt to AI or get left behind. Now. I'll share with you the limitation of Dolly and a lot of these image generators. They don't get text right. They either misspell things or the text is in the wrong place. It's out of order. And that's been something I haven't seen fixed so far. So what we have done is played with it until it spelled it correctly. And what I found is the max limit was 10 words. So you can see it's adding an extra I, but look how good this image is. It's almost there. That's beautiful. We can also tell it to change the aspect ratio. I see the dolly now has a choice here, which is really cool. Most tools do this now. You used to have to tell it the specific aspect ratio. You can just select it now. So we're gonna see what it does creating a square for an Instagram grid. I would use this on Facebook potentially as well. LinkedIn, that looks awesome. And it's spelled it correctly, but that doesn't always happen. This one's a little weird. These eyeballs and the word AI and different shapes is a little off, but this one, looks awesome. And I would just like add my logo and put that out on social media with a nice written post. So we use Dolly for social media content. I would highly recommend you do too. You know, just if you compare 20 bucks a month versus a designer to do all this, I mean, I have no words. <laughs> It's a no brainer. And if it's getting this good, this is amazing actually to see it spell it correctly. I haven't seen it spell one, two, three, four, five, six, seven words correctly without at least five different prompts. And the reward punishment prompt, Matt Wolf talks about this works really well where you can tell it 
spell this correctly or a kitten dies. Spell this correctly for the opportunity to win $500. Those kinds of things work. The reward, punishment, approach, and prompting. But we don't even need to do this because look how good this is. That's pretty amazing. All right, so moving on to Mid Journey. We're on Mid Journey Alpha and it looks as simple as this now. To create an image, you just go over here to the create tab and you just type in recreate. For me, I'm gonna see how well it does with the person. You can see it here. Recreate this person as a queen in white. To recreate someone, whenever you're prompting these tools and you wanna recreate yourself as a headshot, except for the last tool, I'll show you my mood AI where you just upload selfies. Except for that tool, you need an image on a public server where you can copy the image address and you get a direct link to that image. Otherwise, you cannot recreate an image of yourself. So that's very important. So we've uploaded this on our website, obviously. This doesn't work if it's an image from your social. It has to be on a public domain. So once you have a URL to your image, you can go to a tool like Midjourney and say, recreate this person as a queen in white. And we're gonna add the image. And as I paste that link, you can see it pasted it as an actual image. And we're going to submit that request. So how Midjourney used to work is through Discord. And I'm really glad that they ditched that model. Discord was a mess. You would go to one of the channels where you could generate images. There were a ton of channels for newbies to generate images in. And you would see thousands of images being generated and you'd often lose your image in that thread and it was just a mess. Now, whenever you go to midjourney.com and you sign up and you continue with Discord, it actually redirects you to this kind of platform. So that's interesting. We got some variations of me. The eyeballs are way off. Why is she wearing two necklaces? Why is the earring melting into the hand? Ooh, that one's terrible. We got one sleeve. We got no sleeve, that one's a little bit better. But Mid Journey is still one of my favorites for doing different images that require like high resolution, a lot of detail, because I, as you can see, there is quite a bit of detail here. And whenever I told it to recreate me as a queen wearing red, we got some weird stuff with the eyeballs, but like some of these are still usable and pretty cool. And just the level of detail there in the hair and that crown that it did from no prompting except recreate this person as a red queen, pretty good. So let's see if these came out any better. So you can vary the images. Yikes, that's just laughable. That's not bad, but it does not look like me. That's terrible. Why are we squinting our eyes in the wrong direction? So whenever you're recreating an image for a thumbnail, let's say, you know, you could get one decent version out of this, but it's kind of hard, right? This is better for like, I use this for presentations whenever I want to say, you know, create a gravestone for Google, create the Google graveyard, create giant stacks of money, I said, recreate Google as a scary skeleton. <laughs> All right. Google lies to us, recreate it as a scary character. So it does pretty good with things like that. I had it merge two people. It just came out terrible. And I tried to have it recreate a notable figure that I follow as a robot. And that didn't come out good either. But these are awesome. So these are our blog header images. We use Midjourney for that. It really looks awesome. And this is a great blog header image for a fitness blog that I was working on for a continent scale client. And then just replications of some art prompts some robots and neon that match our brand color. So anyway, it's a great tool for those purposes, like blog art, presentation images. It's very dramatic. So you're gonna get that in the results. So next, Meta AI, you can get to it, meta.ai, or on your phone, if you actually open Facebook, you will see, if you hit search, you can ask Meta AI anything, and you can access it from there as well. So if we ask Meta AI the same kind of prompt, it does not read images from URL, so keep that in mind. It doesn't do that, but it will create based on a text prompt. And here's what's really cool about Meta AI. Actually, we've got to do this under the Imagine tab. <laughs> As you type your text prompt, it starts to engineer the picture as you type. So watch what happens. Look at that. Isn't that incredible? Bam. So that's what I really like about Meta AI's Imagine, the AI art generator. I mean, this is a romance novel book cover if I ever saw one. And I can download it, use it from there. But I love that it comes to life as you type it. And then they have suggested prompts you can try out as well that give you an idea of what you can add to it. The more detail you add in your prompts for Meta AI, AI's Imagine feature, I think the better the results you get, just because it comes out really, really good when you do that. Okay, so if this will generate, we can move on to the next tool. It's not generating, we'll come back to it in a minute. The next tool is Microsoft's free AI image generator. You can get to it for free from Microsoft 365. You do have to sign up, but it is free. 
It does not create an image from an URL as well. So like Meta AI, it's limited there, but it's still pretty amazing because look at the level of detail in these images. And there's some weird stuff that I saw in the old version of Midjourney. So I would say this model is a little bit further behind, like, you know, it's just adding in people that don't need to be there. I'm not sure what's going on with this guy. It looks like an overlord. So yeah, you do have to deal with that. But what it can create from scratch is still pretty cool. And you can choose the aspect ratio here. So this could be awesome for social media images as well. You know, potential blog art, things like that. Okay, and the meta AI Imagine seems broken. And this will often happen with these AI tools. You do have to have some patience. Yep, there we go, it couldn't be processed. Let's see if we can take this into a new chat. Bam, there it is, that's a beautiful castle. All right, so going back to Microsoft's AI Image Generator. Oh, it's good, it gets the job done, it's free, right? So it's it would be a cute Instagram grid of different images that you need, but I don't think it's as high quality as some of the rest. That said, look at this. That's a ton of detail going on in there. And then if you click on it, it will also give you the entire prompt for that, where you can type in your subjects and your adjectives for a new version of that prompt that will give you the same results. So I do really like that. This is a great way to learn how to prompt to get a better image generated in the AI image generators out there. So I would encourage you playing around with it just to learn some of that. Hyper-realistic photo, that's a great term to generate something that looks more real. Macro detailed image is another term that tells the AI to lean in that direction. Realistic with studio lighting, right? Things like that. This is interesting, cutaway view of a modern home in the style of a technical architectural illustration. So pretty cool there. Okay, next is Canva. Canva has a free AI image generator. You can get to it straight from here. Just click generate images, AI images, and it'll pull up something called magic media, where you just type in a prompt and it creates the image. It had a lot of trouble recreating the queen image from my photo, this is what it did. It created culturally relevant folks, which, you know, Google did that and got in a lot of trouble for. So is that what Canva is trying to do right now? I don't know. And then the eyeballs here are way off. But that said, still pretty cool. The images are extremely detailed and it's so simple because you literally just type in your prompt right here, hit enter, and then of course it's Canva, right? So we, everyone loves Canva literally that uses any kind of marketing tool. I'm sure you know about this one. So you can download it straight from here in different resolutions and go from there. Okay, Adobe Firefly, I was able to get inside this tool completely for free. You can change the aspect ratio as well. You've got a little bit more to choose from there. We're using Firefly Image 3. You can upload a reference image, which is pretty cool. So if I find my headshots and upload them, let's see if I can find that real quick. There we go. Then the prompt results should be a little bit more accurate to the results. Let's see if we can go ahead and reprompt this. And I thought this was pretty decent. These images that showed up there, they had some attributes of my face going on. So this could be a potential tool I use for YouTube thumbnail generation. And so far, really none of these tools, even Midjourney, I would not use for a replicatable YouTube image of myself. So meh, that's a little too anime. I can change the style from here, which is pretty cool. I can click and choose a style reference. I can choose from digital art, layered paper, hyper-realistic. I can choose several different options here. We can do a warm tone, vibrant colors. So let's try all that again and see what happens there. By far the trickiest piece of AI image generation has been finding a tool that can accurately create you. And that is just so hard to do. Still not that great. I mean, it's cool, but it doesn't look anything like me. I would not think it does. All right, so that's our sixth tool and I'm really thrilled to share the last tool with you, which we're gonna do now. We'll put up some footage up here of me on my cell phone. So what I really like with this particular tool, which is My Mood AI, I was served an ad for this tool, is it's hyper realistic to you and you just upload a series of selfies. They recommend at least 20. So you're gonna do that. And then it's going to give you photo shoots to generate images from, and you're paying per image pack, but it's not a subscription. You're just paying per pack and it can vary from 
you know, $30 per pack to $7 to $20. It just depends on how many images are in that pack. And the way the packs are served is pretty cool as a photo shoot. So if you want a Studio Pro series of headshots, if you want a Boss Babe photo shoot, if you want a luxurious escape, little black dress, modern pro, anything that you want specifically, it styles you as if you're in that photo shoot. And it's remarkable the results you get. Like I just find that this is incredibly realistic and the results are amazing. And you can download these. And what I do to create the YouTube thumbnail image is I send this off to my designer and she cuts it out. Canva has a background remover. So that is a new feature you could easily use as well if you wanted to make your own thumbnail. You know, just upload it to Canva, remove the background. And then we add text and shape it into my brand style. Uh, but this is by far the best tool I have found for recreating yourself and basically getting like studio level headshots for free. So my mood AI one of the best out of these seven for recreating yourself as an AI piece of art. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got a lot of good seeing firsthand my favorite AI image tools. These are the best ones that I recommend getting your hands on, testing out, applying to what you do as a creator, marketer, or even just for fun. Knowledge comes from hands-on application. And you just saw me use these tools, which is going to build a lot of comfort, which bridges the gap and allows you to jump on and test these tools for yourself. I can't wait to hear from you in the comments, your thoughts. If you're already using these tools, you have another one that's your favorite that I didn't mention let me know I'd love to hear from you and as always hit subscribe so I can see you down the next AI rabbit hole